Hello friends, this video on human reproduction part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now before we understand the process of gametogenesis, that is how male gametes and female gametes are formed, it is very important to understand the structure of the reproductive system in human beings because until and unless we do not know the structure of the reproductive system, we will not be able to understand how the gametes are produced. So for that purpose, let us first try to understand the male and the female reproductive system. So we will start with the male reproductive system. So let us talk about the human male reproductive system. So let us now talk about the human male reproductive system. So we will try to understand the structure of the reproductive system in human males. Okay. So this is how the reproductive part looks like in case of human males. So let us quickly have a look. So what are the important parts that together form the reproductive system? So testis, one of the most important part. So where is it located? So if you see, this is the sideways view of the reproductive system of a human male. So this structure is the testis and they exist in pairs. So there are two tes testis on both the sides. This is from one side. Next is the scrotum. Scrotum is this bag-like structure which contains the testis. So if you see it is like a bag kind of a structure inside which the testis is present. So testis is a very important organ because inside the testis only the sperms are produced and sperms are the male gametes. Next is the epididymis. So what is epididymis? Epididymis is nothing but this tube which carries the I mean, which carries the sperms from the testis to the um, to the outside. So that is epididymis. Then the vas deferens. Vas deferens is this tube. So the epididymis later connects to the vas deferens. So this tube is the vas deferens. So if you see from here, it goes and it goes like this. So this is the vas deferens. Next is the urethra. Where is urethra? You see a small tube-like structure through which it actually opens here. So this tube-like structure is the urethra. Finally, the penis. So this is the penis. And besides these, there are a few very important reproductive glands. What are the reproductive glands? They are the prostate gland. So where do you have the prostate gland? This is the prostate gland. There is another gland called seminal vesicles. So where do you have the seminal vesicles? This is the seminal vesicle. And you have another gland that is the Cowper's gland or it is also known as the bulbourethral gland. So this is another gland. So these are the three glands which play a very important role in the process of gametogenesis in case of human males. Now we will talk about each of these parts in more detail now like where are they located, what function do they perform, how important are they for the production of the male gametes. Now the purpose of this male reproductive system overall, what is the purpose of the male reproductive system to produce male gametes because those male gametes will participate in the process of sexual reproduction. Now in order to understand how they participate so we have to be clear about the location of these different parts. So let us have a front view of the male reproductive system. So this is how it looks from the front. So on the front, this is the penis. So if you see this structure, penis is now like this. So this entire thing is the penis. Right? And here you have the two testes. This is one testis and this is another testis. Correct? You have the various glands here. So here you have the seminal vesicle, these brown colored structures. They are the seminal vesicles. So you see they also exist in pairs. These green colored structures, they are the prostate gland. So this also exists in pairs if you see like this. And you also have two small glands just below the prostate glands, which is the bulbourethral gland or it is also known as the Cowper's gland. So these are the three reproductive glands which are located in this area right and if you see this is the penis and the head of the penis or the tip of the penis is covered with a layer of skin which is known as the foreskin 
So basically here what I'm trying to show you is the structure of the male reproductive system, the side view as well as the front view. So once you get a rough idea then we'll talk about each of the parts. So let us try to understand the function of the human male reproductive system. How, would you, how will you understand that by looking at the function of each part? So let us first start with testis. So testis they occur in pairs. Now the singular testis, this is the plural form. And the singular form is testis. So this is singular. So they occur in pairs. They produce sperms, and that is why they are the primary, uh, primary sexual organ in case of human males. Because they are the ones who produce sperms. They also produce a male hormone called testosterone. And what is the function of this hormone? This is the hormone which is responsible for all the secondary uh, sexual characters in a male. What, what do we mean by secondary sexual characters? For example, the change in voice, uh, the uh, presence of facial hair, hair like the beard and the moustaches. Uh, the presence of hair in the genital area or under the armpit. So these kind of uh, uh, characteristics, they are the sec secondary sexual characters. And these characters are influenced by this hormone that is testosterone. And this hormone is produced by the testis. So the testis is the most important organ of the male reproductive system because first of all, it produces the male gametes and it also induces all the secondary the sexual characters in males. The next important part is going to be the scrotum. Now why scrotum is so important because it is the one which holds the testis inside. So it is like an extension of the abdominal cavity containing the testis. Now have you observed this? Like this is where your abdomen, this is your abdominal cavity, right? But outside the abdominal cavity, this scrotum is almost like an extension. I mean, it is as if something is outside the, I mean, a space has been out, created specially outside the abdomen for the testis. Now, why do we need this special uh, space for the testis? Why can't the testis be present inside the abdominal cavity? That is because the main purpose of testis is to produce sperms. And sperm production takes place at a temperature little lower than the body temperature. Right. So had the testis been located inside the body, then sperms would have not been produced. So we actually need to ensure that the temperature inside the testis is lower than the temperature inside our body. And how can we ensure that? By keeping the testis in a separate cavity. And that separate cavity is the scrotum. So here you can see this entire thing is the abdominal cavity. But the scrotum is like an extension of the abdominal cavity which contains the testis and which ensures that the temperature here is little, little lesser when compared to the internal body temperature. So it protects the testis so it also acts as a protective covering because the testis is extremely important. They, they will produce sperms, they will also produce the male hormone. So we, we need to protect it. So it ensures protection and it also uh, provides a separate cavity where the temperature will be suitable for sperm production. So it maintains a temperature lower than the body temperature. Here we are just talking in brief about each of these parts because when you actually start when we actually start talking about the internal structure of testis, we will see that it is made up of you know, several coiled tubules which are lined by cells of epithelium. Which, in, which actually help or which actually produce sperms. So we will spend some time to understand the internal structure of testis. So we will do that very soon. So now the next part is the epididymis. So what is this epididymis? Okay, this is another important part. It is a complex tube-like structure in scrotum. So if you see here, just after the testis, you see here a tube-like structure. Right? So this tube-like structure which lies inside the scrotum. So inside the scrotum itself this is present and this is known as the epididymis. So this structure is epididymis. So what is its job? Now as I said scrotum is the sac. Inside that you have testis. Inside testis you have a very complex structure of tubules which produce sperms. Now what happens once the sperms are produced? So those sperms are then passed into this tube like structure called epididymis. 
so it helps to store sperms and it also helps in the passage of sperms so the sperms actually come out of the testis and it enters into the epididymis so the epididymis will store it temporarily and then as and when needed it will keep on passing the sperm so basically storage and passage of sperms next is the vas deferens so it is like an extension of the tube after the epididymis so it is again a tube like structure which emerges from the lower part of epididymis so from here so wherever the epididymis ends uh, the vas deferens starts so it starts from where uh, epididymis ends and it extends up to the pelvic cavity. So it keeps on extending till here. And where does it open? And then it opens into another ejaculatory duct. So that means the duct which actually uh, takes the sperms out of the body. Right. So this is a tube from the urinary a a tube from the urinary bladder also unites with this tube. So if you see this is the urinary bladder. So if you see here a tube from the urinary bladder also joins with this tube. So from here sperms are produced. So the sperms are then passed through these tubes. So this is the vast difference and then the sperms will pass through this tube like this. Then a tube from the urinary bladder will also join this tube and finally this tube will secrete the sperm outside of the human male body. So that is the pathway which the sperms follow. Now while the sperm follows this path, quite a few things will actually join in. For example, some secretions from these reproductive glands will also join in. Something from the urinary bladder will also join the duct. So that means different things might join in. But basically, this is the path which is followed by the sperms. So this tube-like structure, this portion of the tube-like structure is known as vas deferens. So it opens to the ejaculatory duct and this is the ejaculatory duct. Ejaculation means giving out sperms to the exterior to the outside that is called ejaculation so and the duct which does this ejaculation is called the ejaculatory duct so that is the vast difference next is the penis so the penis is a muscular copulatory organ so muscular in nature that is why it is able to make movements copulatory organ that is it is the main organ by which intercourse is done i mean this is the organ which actually helps in the sexual intercourse between a human male and a human female so what does it do it discharges sperms when stimulated so whenever the penis is stimulated since it is muscular in nature it tends to become hard and that is when whenever it is stimulated the tube inside the penis will actually ejaculate the sperms outside when i say outside where does it ejaculate the sperms it ensures that the sperms are uh, ejaculated inside the female's body for effective sexual reproduction right so it is the male external genitalia because this is the uh, this is that part of the human male reproductive system which actually uh, exposes the sperms to the exterior now the enlarged end of the penis is called the glans penis so if you look at the structure of the penis so this structure is penis right so if you look at the enlarged end of the penis so this end of the penis is known as glans penis so this side of the penis is glans penis and there is a fourth skin which covers the glans penis so this skin which is present here so you see a layer of skin being present here so this skin is called fourth skin so that is how the structure of the penis is Urethra is a tube-like structure which is a common passage for sperms and urine. So if you see, urethra is this passage. So this passage is called urethra and it is common for both urine. If so when, when a person wants to urinate, so the urine will also come out through urethra. When a person wants to secrete sperms, so that and the sperms will also come through this Path. So urethra is like common passage for both sperms and urine. So it originates from urinary bladder. So if you see it, orig it is originating from the bladder. This is the bladder and this is the urethra. So it is originating from here and it opens to the exterior through an op opening called urethral meters. So this opening here which you see, this opening is called urethral meters. So that is the opening of the or a tiny pore towards one end of the urethra. 
So this urethra passes through the penis and then opens to the outside. Now, just now I told you that the sperms are secreted when the penis is stimulated. Now, what happens when the penis is stimulated? Well, when being stimulated, the tissues of the penis get filled with blood, making it firm and erect. So when that happens now, since it is made up of, as I said, it is muscular in nature, it is made up of loose muscles. So when it becomes firm and erect, what happens is the sperms which are present inside the urethra, they tend to be secreted out. So that is how that is how the ejaculation of sperms take place. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.